Welcome to Successful Philanthropy. I'm your host, Jean Shafaroff. This show is designed to highlight the work of leaders here in the United States and then beyond. Today with us, a most accomplished and fascinating woman. Her name, Vicki Schnepps. And Vicki is an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and the co-owner of the largest network of community newspapers in the United States. Let's all welcome Vicki Schnepps. And uh, Vicki, it is a great pleasure and an honor to be able to interview you. And I'd like first to start with your beginnings. You started Schnepps Media many, many years ago. How did you begin? Well, you know, my life uh, started to change when my first child was born. Lara turned blue in the nursery and suffered irreparable brain damage. So she was basically a three month old her whole life. And because of Lara, I had to find help for her. After you look for a cure and you can't find a cure, then you look for help. And there was a place on Staten Island called Willowbrook and they had just built an infant rehabilitation center. So with a lot of tears, but a lot of hope, we brought Lara to Willowbrook. And I lived in Bayside and I had these wonderful friends and neighbors who came to me and said, Vicki, there but for the grace of God go I, how can we help you and Lara? So we formed Life's Work, which uh, was a volunteer and fundraising organization on my living room sofa. <laughs> we used to meet and then every week we would go and volunteer at Willowbrook. And within a short time of Lara's being there, Governor Rockefeller slashed the budget of the direct care workers and people were literally dying for lack of care. And so my lovely ladies from New York started marching and picketing with me. And there was a cub reporter by the name of Geraldo Rivera from Eyewitness News that was snuck into Willowbrook by a doctor who was very disturbed about conditions. And Geraldo came with his camera and his passion and compassion. And I can only say to Eugene, these are, you know, he covered this day in and day out, but I'll never forget his first words of talking about Willowbrook. He said, I can show you the pictures of people lying on the floor. I can let you hear the sounds of people moaning but how do I describe the smell? And that really was what did my husband was a lawyer and we filed a federal class action lawsuit because we felt the place could never be good. Restoring the funds was not going to make it better. And so my lovely ladies and I, which now is called Life's Work, which is my life's work. It's my fifth child. I had three more children after Lara. We put together the opportunity to open a group home and we won that lawsuit and that lawsuit closed Willowbrook and Willowbrook is now the College of Staten Island and every group home that you'll see in the community came out of that class action lawsuit. And I'll never forget how when we were marching and picketing, I used to feel like we were banging on the air, nobody listened. But when Geraldo came with his cameras, everybody listened. And I said to myself, you know, my master's degree is in teaching and I always wanted to be a teacher. But I said, you know, look at the power of the press. I'd like to be in the news business someday. So we fast forward to um, three more children. And when my little one, Josh, went to kindergarten, I said, you know, I live in Bayside and all the buildings in 1985 that were rental had an opportunity to go co-op and they did. And I knew that when people own their apartments or their homes, they care about their neighborhood. So I went to a friend who took out a buyout from the Daily News, who was a veteran journalist. My master's degree, as I said, was in teaching. I didn't know anything about newspapering, but I had a lot of what we call chutzpah. <laughs> That's a wonderful Yiddish word that means I had a lot of nerve and I just went ahead and did what I felt I wanted to do. 
And so we started a newspaper in Bayside, where I lived, and it was a first issue. Our We had a baby's picture on the front page. You'll love this, Jean. And we wrote every article, and we took every picture, and John Toscano's son delivered the paper. But when it came to the first issue, it must have been about 2 o'clock in the morning. We bring the boards to the printer, the big web presses that you see in the movies, and they bring me the first run of the paper of my first Queen's Choria. And I look at the front cover and I see the baby's picture on my front cover is a black blog. And I <laughs> screamed out, stop the presses. And they did. And fortunately we had the picture in the car. We reshot the picture. They replated the presses and about three o'clock in the morning, they bring me the next edition fixed. And they say, madam, is this okay? And I look and I said, it's a run. And so quality has always been my mantra for whatever we put out into our presses. And that now, was Vicky, the first Now, I want to interrupt you for a minute because what I'm hearing is extraordinary. You unfortunately had a child uh, with Down syndrome. No, not Down syndrome. She was brain damaged. So she was I see. three months and old her whole life. And she went into Willowbrook. You and Rivaldo Herrera were instrumental in closing Willowbrook, which I think is fantastic because it was not a good place. You started a charity called Life Work to help people who suffered from brain damage and to close places like Willowbrook and open up homes where people with uh, situations such as your daughter could live. And then from there, you realize the power of media and you started a media company. I think it's fascinating. And well, I started with one newspaper and I think that's the key, Jean. You know, I started small and as a woman in business, I had four children. So I really did not grow my business until my baby, Josh, went off to a college. And that's when I really started growing the business. But, you know, at that point, I owned and started from scratch 12 newspapers and a Spanish language newspaper because of the growth of the Spanish community. So, you know, sometimes starting small and we added one paper in one neighborhood, then another neighborhood, then another neighborhood. And um, I had 12 newspapers when Josh already graduated college and he was working in investment banking. And he called me one night and he said, Mom, if I'm going to work 24-7, can I come work for you? Hmm. And what's a mother's dream, you know, to have her one of her children in business? So I said, of course. And so he worked in my Howard Beach newspaper and my office was in Bayside. And, you know, because he was a numbers man, I'm more of the creative person. I just not sure we have enough money in the bank to pay payroll. That's all I care about. So, but Josh had the, you know, numbers knowledge. And so we had an opportunity to buy some papers in Bay Ridge outside of Queens. And so we ultimately bought the papers in Bay Ridge. And then people came to us and said, well, you know, we, we don't want to be in the business of community journalism anymore. Would you buy us? And then we bought AM New York. And then we bought Bayside Times. And we bought our competitors in every borough so that it grew exponentially. To be in every borough of New York City, we own the community newspaper. And then recently, within the last three years, we just finished our third summer, we acquired Dan's Papers in the Hamptons. And Which we've is had a big publication, and it's out there every single week. You publish every single week, and it's all over the Hamptons. I guess the most successful uh, print um, newspaper out there. Well, you know, our key is, is that, yes, we do print 600,000 newspapers a week, but we had 9.8 million page views on our websites. So we do both digital and print, social media and events. And then you'll appreciate this, Jean, because I know we've honored you as a power woman. I was at a Chamber of Commerce annual business awards event. 
and I'm sitting in the audience and I'm looking out at the dais that covered the entire ballroom of this hotel. And I see on this dais, not one woman is being honored as a business leader. Mm. So I turned to a friend of mine from a city bank and I said, you know, I'm going to start a Power Women event right here in Queens. And I need some money. You know, I want to do an ultimate networking guide. So I, she said, well, how much is it going to cost to print it? I said, well, $1,500. She said, oh, send me the bill and we'll we'll do that. <laughs> so that's how business used to be done with banks, right? <laughs> with just a handshake. But so Vicki, I'm sorry to interrupt again, but how many years ago was it that you actually started to honor women <coughs> at a Power Women event? 30 years ago. I started with the Power Women of Queens where my newspapers were. And then when we acquired papers in Brooklyn, we did the Power Women of Brooklyn. Then we acquired papers in Manhattan, we did the Power Women of Manhattan. Then we acquired papers in Bronx, we did the Power Women of the Bronx. And we did Dan's paper. We own Long Island Press, which has been around for 250 years, Jean. That's another case of someone saying, you know, I'm just not going to do it anymore. Would you want to buy us? So we bought the Long Island Press and we do the Long Island Press Power Women. And then we do Dan's Papers Power Women. So we now added Palm Beach. So we're going to have the power list at Palm Beach this March. And we are delighted. Of course, we'll have to have you on our power list of Palm Beach wow. because we're, we're transplants, aren't we, Jean? We do the city, we do the island, and now we do Palm Beach in the winter for all of our readers that are down there. So yes, now, about, Vicky, it's, it's another question, and I hate to interrupt, but how important are women's rights to you? I would assume very important. And then my next question you're involved in politics. I want you to tell us a little bit about that. Well, I would say I cover politics. We own the paper because of my own life as an advocacy newspaper. And I've always been a centrist covering politics. So I will cover the Republicans, the De Democrats, the conservatives, the independent. To me, we cover the news in the neighborhood. So we are very much engaged with the bringing to the people who read our community newspapers, the political leadership in their borough, in their town, in their city. And so, you know, that's really been uh, my political involvement is covering the politicians and what they do to benefit the community or not. Interesting. And what about women's rights? How involved well, are you? Know, you? Just take that for granted. You know, I've never um, been what I call a women's liber. I am a woman who has very clear vision. I kind of recommend to people who want to accomplish things, just put on blinders. Go for your mission and don't let anybody distract you with static. Because we have, <clears throat> excuse me, a very wonderful opportunity just to do what we want to do. We're very blessed as women. And I think, you know, uh, I was very lucky that at the time when I started my newspapers, I didn't take a salary for two years oh. because you can't have expenses more than what you're bringing in in revenue. And until we grew it, we kept our expenses very low. But I never thought about approaching anyone that I'm a woman. No, no, I'm in business. And being in business is my mission. Yes, but you've supported women by having your power list for women. And in many ways, you're, you've are you empowered women, which is very, very important. And I want to thank you for doing that. You've also empowered men. You've empowered people in business. You've empowered philanthropy by writing about all the different charities and then by having your own charity or starting your own charity uh, for people who have suffered from brain damage. And really, I need to thank you because I think it's very important. Very often people forget that the press is very involved in supporting philanthropy. This show, Successful Philanthropy, is designed to highlight people that are involved in all aspects of philanthropy, people who run charities, people who support charities, people who promote charities through the press. Well, Jean, I, I'm going to interrupt you for one minute because I would love you to change your word from charity to causes. 
because I really think you as an individual support causes. You and your family have made such a difference by the way you support different causes. I feel that the word charity is only an old word that people, you know, give charity for poor people. No, no, no. You're supporting life. You're supporting the uh, people I know your family is so involved in uh, causes around animal safety and animal, uh, you know, uh, shelters. I'm involved so much, but it's a cause for me. It's a cause in my life. And I invite people in the community to get involved in causes because well, we, as one person, can make a difference. No we question. One, one person can make a huge difference, as you have and as others have. Uh, my family, we're involved in animal rights, health care, rights of underserved populations, and then also uh, women's rights. But we support many other causes as well. As you said, I'm going to use the word causes. I use the char word charity because um, many people, when they think of a cause, it may not be a 501c3. A 501c3 is a not-for-profit that has um, been filed with the United States of America and receives uh, uh, the status of being a not-for-profit or a charity. And when you send a donation to a 501c3, it's something uh, that's tax-deductible, 501c3s have to file forms with the U.S. government, something called the 990, and they're they're watched uh, in terms of how they use the money, which I think is so important. Well, Getting well, back that, to our fabulous guest today, no, that, we have you. with us Vicki Schneps, and Vicki is the owner or co-owner of Schneps Media which is the largest community network of newspapers in the United States. She's an entrepreneur and philanthropist. Now, now Vicki, you recently had a building named after you uh, for your work with LifeWork, the charity that helps uh, people um, with... Um, we call them special Physical disability and mental special disability. Needs. Tell us about that event and why was that building named after you? I'm assuming because of all you've done for the charity. Well, you know, I founded that organization in my living room 50 years ago. And I have had such great, in the beginning, women support us because we were the women's organization for retarded children, which was now, you don't use the word retarded any longer. But WRC started in my living room with other women who wanted to help. And so, you know, for us, it's really this whole vision of being able to be out there and making a difference every day. And I was blessed to be able to have this organization that now runs 50 group homes in Nassau, Suffolk, Queens and Manhattan and day programs serving over 2000 people that started in my little living room on my wonderful sofa. <laughs> and so they decided to name their main headquarters building for me. But I was so blessed that um, Eric Adams, the great mayor of the city of New York came to um, pay tribute and to be there to uh, recognize me. And Bruce Blakeman, who's the head of the Nassau He's the supervisor of Nassau County. And then Steve Ballone came, who was the supervisor of Suffolk County. And then Rebecca Seawright came, who was with, on the Assembly Disability Council. And Jody Giglio, who was on the Disability Council. So they gathered with a lot of friends and family at the program headquarters, which is in Garden City. And uh, we cut a ribbon and Geraldo Rivera, the love, you know, we kid each other. We've known each other for over 50 years. And he's had five wives. But he says, you know, you're the longest running woman in my life, except for my mother. <laughs> but he has a wonderful wife, Erica, who's become a very dear friend. And Geraldo came to the ribbon cutting. And that was a great joy in my life to know that he has been supporting our cause also for 50 years. And the very first group home we opened was because of Geraldo. 
he had a concert in Madison Square Garden with John Lennon and Yoko Ono and Roberta Flack and John Denver and raised enough money that we were able to buy a group home in Little Neck. And we bought this house to open the first group home for children in New York State. And they didn't want us. They sued me. They sued my organization. I even had death threats. I had to take my Schnepps license plates off the car because people were so crazy that what we were doing to their neighborhood. And in fact, when they came to see the house, they said, oh, gee, this is beautiful. And people from Willowbrook moved into that house and they're still living there 50 years later. But Geraldo Rivera is on the name of the very first house and it's really very great pride of his involvement all these years. And uh, last week he donated $50,000 to help the cause because we could develop a workforce program to help train people to be the most that they could be. So we really have, um, it's a living, breathing organization. As you know, when you get involved in something, it's always growing and changing. And we need to encourage that growth. Because I believe in business, Gene, and I don't know if you've seen this, that if you don't grow, you die. You die as a business, you die as a person. You have to keep growing. And every day to me is a great adventure. And look at you, you've done the same thing. You, you've just fearlessly gone in and have a TV show, right? And keep moving on and keep doing new things. But this interview is about you, Vicki. And I just want to thank you so much for being really the person, you and Rivaldo, uh, for getting uh, the group home, the Willowbrooks of the world closed and getting group homes open for those who really you changed their lives and you've made, uh, you've, you've dramatically changed the lives of thousands and thousands of people, not only in the United States, but across the world. So thank you. And now, uh, Vicki, you had a lot of experience in business and philanthropy, a lot of experience with people. One of the things I like to ask my guests about is what advice do you give to someone maybe just starting out in a career or someone who wants to start their own business or wants to start their own charity? What what advice do you give and any recommendations you can possibly uh, leave us with? Well, I think my biggest piece of advice is that no one is successful who doesn't work hard. Last week, I had the pleasure of meeting David Beckham, who's probably the world's greatest soccer player ever. He came out to Long Island and I had a chance to talk with him and I asked him, what were his secrets to success? He was the first one there for practice and the last one to leave. For me, I'm a 24 seven person. I don't think you can be successful in business if you don't put in the time. And I think that there is nothing more important than being there and to be able to be committed with your body and soul. Um, you know, I started my newspapers in my living room, like I started the organization WRC Life's Work in my living room. And finally, my husband said, listen, you're working 24-7. Either the business has got to go or you've got to go. One of them has got to get out of the house and not be in the house. And that's when I opened an office because, you know, it's a very, when you start a business, it's very compelling to answer every phone call, to respond and to be entrepreneurial by looking and asking for business. And it doesn't happen without hard work. And I think if there's anything else that all the other things are peripheral, but by being totally committed, and that means putting in the time and you've got to figure out how do I balance my business, my personal life and my children and a husband, I mean, I'm a widow now, so I put in too much time. My staff used to say to me, don't you have to go home to stew? Well, I used to have to go home to stew. But right now, I'm really a free bird. And, you know, there's no boundaries when you love what you do. And I wake up every morning, Jean. And you know what? I am just ready to go. 
It gives me a reason to get up in the morning, to have a project. What is better in life than to love what you do? And someone said to me, Vicki, you work so hard. I turned around and I looked around. And I said, is this work? <laughs> to meet you, to talk with you? This is great joy. And if you have something that you love to do, that's another secret to success. Don't get caught in something you don't love. And I think my sustenance, you know, with all these years between life's work and my business, which is celebrating 38 years of covering communities, is all about love, loving what you do. So that when I wake up in the morning, I'm raring to go. So I hope to keep going until no life left <laughs> because I don't believe in retirement. I don't understand that word. But I do understand making a difference in the community. And when we're in business, the key to success is loving what you do and then working real hard at it. And there's no one can stop you. And I agree almost, I guess everyone I know who's a success in business or in life is a hard worker. I also believe like you, if you have a passion for something, it makes that work so much easier. And of course, you have to fall in love with your work, honesty, integrity. And one of the people I interviewed who's extremely successful also said, you have to be a nice person. And Vicki, when I think of you, I think of a woman who is hardworking, who loves her work, is honest and a nice person, and who likes to make change. Vicki, you've been a wonderful, wonderful guest. This interview, we've got 30 seconds left. What would you like to leave us with? Read Dan's papers. Read AM New York. Read my Bayside Times, my Queen's Courier. Read my wonderful papers online and in print. Thank you, Jean. And thank and you. And back. finally, and get um, back. Get do you back. have the website for the charity uh, Life Work so that people yeah. could donate? Thank you. Lifeswork.org. That's lifeworkwroc.org. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. you. This concludes Successful Philanthropy. Our guest today, Vicki Schneps. She is the co-owner of Schneps Media, which is the largest community newspaper group in the United States. She's an entrepreneur and philanthropist. I'm Jean Shaparoff, your host. I'll see you next week.